All right, everybody. The, uh, the Open Hardware Summit brand is all about starting on time. So we're gonna be on brand and we're gonna start on time. If everyone could come on in, uh, if you need to keep chatting, it's fine. If you go out uh, to the back in the sponsored Tay area, that would be great. Look at that. Well, thank you everyone for coming. Thank you everyone who's streaming live on the internet to the 2018 Open Hardware Summit here at MIT. It is super exciting for all of you to be here this morning. We have an amazing day of great presentations to talk about the thing that brings us all here, which is open hardware and all the ways that open hardware is uh, improving the world, all the neat things that are happening in open hardware. And it's just an opportunity for the entire community to come together and talk about open hardware and explore what's happening with open hardware. I'm Michael Weinberg. I am the, uh, the president of the board of the Open Source Hardware Association. I'm going to open up with a, a presentation about something that we're really excited about. I want to say a quick thank you uh, to MIT, obviously, for, for giving us this space today. Um, I want to thank Drew, who's in the back, who did all the work on these fantastic badges. Um, so thank you, Drew. I am told that if you need to reprogram it, make sure there are batteries in it, obviously, and if you hit the, uh, the button that's sort of like the application button, it'll turn it into a, an access point, and you can access it with your phone, update it however you please through your browser. So uh, go ahead and do that. And then also a huge thank you to Addy, who is the, the czarina of the Open Hardware Summit, who has been pulling this together. So huge thank you, Addy. <laughs> And to everyone else who's been doing so much work to make this happen, the summit doesn't just happen. Um, it happens because all these people have come together, and it's really a labor of love. With that, I want to talk about something that's really exciting that we've been working on at Oshawa for, I mean, depending on how you count, at least a year, maybe more. And that is the new version of the open source hardware certification process. This is the thing I'm told, I mean, look, this is probably going to knock your socks off. There are socks in the swag bags if you need replacement socks. Um, if this doesn't, which, you know, it may not be the right thing for every, everyone, something today is going to knock your socks off. So we got backup socks for everyone. If you don't, get another bag in the back. We plan ahead at Oshawa. So I want to talk about the new certification. And this is, this is something that I think is going to be a really helpful resource to the community and really excited to hear your feedback about. Just some background, how did we get here? In 2015, we started hearing a lot from the community that there was a problem where there were a lot of people running around saying open source hardware this, open source hardware that, but it wasn't always clear what they were talking about when they were saying open source hardware, what definition of open source hardware they were building on. And so one of the things that we tried to do is we said, OK, if we put together a certification process where if you're creating open source hardware that complies with the community definition of open source hardware that Oshawa maintains, then you can apply for free you can get an official certification, and that means you can put the certification logo on your hardware, and you can put your unique ID on the hardware. And so then people know when you're saying open source hardware, you mean the community definition of open source hardware. And when you're a user, and you're looking at hardware that claims to be open source, you know if they're using the shared definition or not. So this is a really exciting thing. We put it together. We launched at the summit in 2016. And since then, I think it's been a great success. Um, right now, as of a couple days ago, we've got over 200 pieces of hardware from 27 countries on five continents that's certified for open source hardware compliance. And that's just, I mean, that's a fantastic number. That's a really exciting number. That's, last year, it was 15 countries. Now we've almost doubled that to 27 countries. I think that really reflects how people all over the world are excited about open source hardware and excited to be able to say, I am doing open source hardware in the way the community expects, and I want to be able to talk about that. 
So with the new with the old certification, everything was working. We think it was it's 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 been adopted pretty widely, but it was the first version. And so we knew there were things that we could be improving. One of the challenges that we know remained was that information about open source hardware was sort of scattered. Over the years, Oshawa put together some great resources. There's obviously, there's the definition. There's the frequently asked questions. There's the best practices guide. But each one of these things was, was put together at a slightly different point in history. and had had a lot of information, but it wasn't always clear where to go to answer the question that you wanted, and which answer was exactly the most current and updated answer. So we had good information that was scattered all over the site. Another challenge, open source hardware licensing is hard. <laughs> there are a lot of licenses. It's not always clear which license is appropriate for which situation, what you're licensing, what you can license, how all that works, I think it's safe to say that continued and continues to be a challenge for the community. There's also a design and usability problem. When we put up the first certification site, we wanted to get it up quickly to, to let people use it. And that means it was made up of you know, Google Docs that were embedded in WordPress pages. It wasn't the most user-friendly website. And that was especially true for the certification directory. It was a, it was a spreadsheet embedded in a, in a, in a web page. Uh, that was a great way to get it up on the internet, but it wasn't a great way to find things that you wanted to find. And so we sat down and we said, okay, let's reimagine this process. Let's create something that is a really fantastic experience for a huge range of users, because we want to bring all that information together in one place in a coherent story, but also make sure that if you're someone who's new to open source hardware, there's a way for you to enter and to learn what you want to learn at the level you want to learn it. Or if you're a veteran of open source hardware and you want to take a deep dive into something specific, there's a way for you to do that. If you just want to get something certified, there's a way for you to do that as well. And so today we are announcing at the summit, I'm very excited for this, it's been a lot of work going into it, Certification 2.0. It's available right now at certification.oshwa.org. It's a bad thing for a speaker to say, stop paying attention to me and like, go to your phone. Uh, or if you're on the live stream, open up a new browser window. But like, you know, you can go ahead and do that. It's pretty fantastic, this new website. Uh, let me talk about the new features that we have. So the first thing is we have learning modules. We decided to consolidate that information and organize it in a way that makes sense. So you can go to the hardware page, find out what it means when we're talking about open source hardware, learn what it means to do different kinds of licensing, understand what goes on when you're specifically open sourcing hardware or software. You can learn about branding. One of the really complicated questions and the important questions about open source hardware is how you can be open and still establish a brand that is, is durable and that is viable. So those modules will make it much easier for people to really engage with open source hardware. We didn't just want to talk about these things in the abstract. And so in addition to the learning modules, actually integrated into learning modules, we have community examples. We took examples from hardware that's already been certified and say, hey, this is how these people thought about this question. This is how they decided to do licensing. This is how they decided to do documentation. This is how they're thinking about branding. So you can really look at specific community examples when you're trying to work through how all of these things work. We also streamline the certification application process. Now, the certification application process, it really serves two purposes. The first is to apply for certification, which, again, remember, is totally free. The second thing is it really acts as a checklist. If you are working through the process of making open source hardware, as you do the application, you will make sure that you've done all the things that you need to do under the community definition. So the new application is much more streamlined, much more accessible. We think it's going to be much easier for people to use. We're also trying to bring some licensing clarity to open source hardware. Um, I hope we're succeeding. <laughs> I think this is, this is a complicated area. It will continue to be a complicated area. But we're trying to do this in two ways. The first thing that we're doing is, as part of the certification application, we're asking you explicitly to tell us how you're licensing the hardware, 
how you're licensing the software, if there is software, and how you are licensing the documentation. So we're calling out to you, there are three different things you need to think about, and you need to tell us how you've thought about it. And second thing is, for each one of those categories, we're showing you recommended licenses. So you can see, these are the kind of licenses that lend themselves to documentation, as opposed to these are the kind of licenses that lend themselves to hardware. Now, this is not the definitive list. We can, there are plenty of licenses you can use that are not on the list. But we tried to narrow it down to make it easier for people to make quick decisions that are also informed decisions. And again, because we have those community examples, we don't just say, I don't know, pick a license. We show you examples of different kinds of hardware that have chosen to have different kinds of licenses. So you can say, okay, this is a hardware creator that I, that I trust, that I want to follow. If they made this decision, maybe that's a good guide for my decision. And we're going to keep building out those examples as more people come into the certification. We also greatly improved the searchability of the listing of projects. Like I said before, uh, up until today, if you wanted to do certification and you wanted to find a directory of what's happened before, you got to spreadsheet on a web page and, you know, control F to figure something out. Um, this is a much richer experience. You can search by country, you can search by category, you can search by license, you can search by a huge number of things, which means when you're getting started, if you're looking for hardware, it'll be much easier for you to find hardware that is relevant to you. We think this is going to be a really rich resource for the community going forward. So none of this would be possible without collaboration. Uh, first and foremost, from the community and the board and all the people who took time to do focus groups and to give us feedback and work our way through the process. Also, the Sloan Foundation, which recognized the importance of a resource like this and gave us a grant to really build this new website. The NYU uh, Technology Law and Policy Clinic, who their students as part of a project did a lot of the initial writing of a lot of those educational modules. And so a lot of that information came from them. And then the team at Objectively, who helped us design the website, but not just design the site, but really think through the experience and understand what we needed to do, take all this information and bring it together into a single coherent story. So this is the new certification. I think it's going to be really useful, really helpful. I hope that you take some time to explore it. It's so a certification.oshawa.org. Get your own certification logo. You can see the back of the badges. These are certified. You can get your own certification logo if you go through the experience. Try it. Test it out. Give us feedback. Uh, this is what I look like. If you had feedback today, come tell me. Uh, tweet at us at OHSummit18. We've got forums on the site. And more than anything else, please just use the site and use the certification process and tell us what else it needs and what would be useful for you going forward. So thank you, everyone. Thank you, everyone, for coming. We've got a great lineup of speakers. And um, stick around for a great day. Thank you so much.